Today we're going to look at how to boost your sales. Some of the features on eBay that can get you some more sales coming in very quickly. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at a method I use to boost sales, to bring some more revenue coming in. Now, April's usually when I start this. I've already done some sales and markdown from the marketing tab in the hub. The marketing tab in the hub is where all of these sorts of things are done, whether it's a promoted listing, which I do not do, or whether it's a sales and markdown, which is something I do regularly. So we're in the hub. This is my store here. We're under the marketing tab, as you can see right here. Now, I don't use promoted listings at all. That's where you pay eBay an extra fee for them to supposedly promote them and get you more sales. I've tried it. I've done it since the ad blocker blocked some of it and the way they've been doing it. I haven't done it in well over a year, maybe longer than that. I'm not even sure when that fiasco happened, but I don't do promoted listings at all. The only type of promotion or anything like that that I do do is markdown sale. When you click on markdown sale, you'll see your running total. Now, I've got some that I've just placed on sale in just the last few days. And unfortunately, eBay's breakdown isn't showing sales that happen through these promotions. I can look at my items and see that they were sold by the selling price through one of these promotions, but for whatever reason, they are not showing up on eBay's report down here. I'm not really concerned about that aspect. I'm only really using this to actually run the sale to begin with. This is the best way, in my opinion, to get some movement on your account. Now, let's just create one. We'll go down to Sale, Event, and Markdown. That's the one I always use. I don't use an order discount, a shipping discount, volume pricing, or codeless coupon at all. So when you click on it, it gives you several options. Now, if you have a pricing scheme, you can use that to aggressively figure out what you should mark something down. Now, we have a 3x pricing scheme, which basically means that we price them at three times what the very, very bottom price we would ever take on the item is. So if I do a discount of a set amount, say one third off, I am still getting a third over what I would expect to get bottom end out of that item. It's just the way I do it. What I usually do is a 28% discount lately. It's less than that mark. It gives me a few more percentage points to play with. That's what I always do. I don't do any take so much off each item or anything like that. I don't worry about the offer free shipping for all discounted items or anything along that line at all. I just do the percentage off. Now, once you've picked your percentage off, you've got another option here. You can do it by specific items or you can do it by creating rules. Creating it by rules, by category, is always the easiest for me. And that's the best, easiest, quickest way to get this done. Now, part of the reason I'm using this option here and doing the 28% off is because I'm trying to get people to look and watch the item more so than anything else. This is a ploy to get people to watch it so that I can send an offer to a watcher. The offers to watchers is the whole point of me doing this. So even if I do a 28% off discount on a bunch of items, I still can accept an offer from a watcher. I can still send offers to watchers as well, and I can still take a discount above and beyond the 28% because of my pricing structure. Now, most of the items that I share with everyone are items that are collectible. There's a field of collectors that want them. So I can price in this structure effectively very easily. So let's pick a category or so and figure out what we want to do. Let's pick musical instruments and gear. Let's, let's do some markdowns on sheet music. I've got almost 1,100 sheet musics in-house. So once I pick that, it's going to show all of my listings. Now, I don't want to do it to my cheap discounted one, so I'm going to start them off at sheet music that is over $14. And on this side, I usually use $999.99 for my max, and then I click the little arrow there, and it has now filtered these down to only sheet music that's over $14. That's what I wanted to do. Now, you can filter them again by whether they're used and things like that. Now, I can also add Add something else. I want to mark down a few records by chance. So let's mark down the music as well. And now that's going to add a whole nother section into here. Same thing as well. I don't want to mark anything though down in music that's below $15.99. And then I'm going to mark it up to $999.99 as well. 
click that over and now what I have included in this markdown are 2000 listings that are in my records field as well as that are in the sheet music field now I'm gonna save and review this comes up to here now you can label it uh, however you want the sales event I'm just gonna do the same very thing that it already has save up to 28% I'm gonna copy that and then I'm gonna drop it down here for my sales banner on select store items and that's what I'm gonna leave it at right there that's going to be the title of this one and I title pretty much everything the same if I do sales I usually let them run for the whole month that eBay suggests I don't touch anything else the only thing I change is I uncheck the include skipped or new items when they qualify that means if I list something immediately it could be added to this if it follows the scheme if the item is over $14 it will automatically be added in here I don't want that I also want to check this one here keep items in the sale and block revision for price increases so anything on sale I'm not going to increase or change or do anything with once it's up now you can increase prices if you want later on during the sale if that's what you wish to do but once I run a sale I usually just keep it the way it is that's your preference on how you do it now I'm gonna launch it and that's going to start it now it takes some time an hour or two for most of these to start it usually gives you a time frame it's scheduled but it does have the time that it will start and the time that it will end as per eBay's user agreement this time could fluctuate it may not be exact could be delayed for some reason I don't worry about any of that that's unimportant to what I'm doing I've got almost 20,000 items on sale as of right now which is fine what this also does is any site that's hooked up to my eBay account such as hip will also see that sale discount so once I've got it on eBay it automatically is broadcasted out to other platforms now if you use a feature such as ink frog or something like that you can stop the sale from going anywhere other than eBay if you so wish so just keep in mind if you have another site or anything else like that linked to your store like hip or bonanza or anything else like that it will affect the prices on other platforms I am not worried with that at all but the main reason I do this is for the offers to watchers ability now I've been sending them out constantly when they come in now this is a big push doing a discount like this you could do a five a ten percent it just gets people interested to come into your store and watch your items once you watch your items you've got the option here as I said to send offers to L eligible watchers now I just sent out offers to watchers just over an hour ago so these all popped in within an hour time frame I've got 21 available ones that I can send out right away on these and as time goes by once these sales start to hit and people see them I will get a ton more watchers in so if I usually get 150 options to send offers to watchers a day usually when I do a sale that doubles or even triples I may at the end of this have 400 or so a day I have options to send offers to watchers to now many people may assume 28 percent is pretty high why would I send an offer to a watcher I'm just gonna knock it down another five percent which will bring it to one-third of my cost on the items and that works perfectly fine with my 3x pricing structure I have with most of my vintage and collectible items it still means I'm getting a third over my bottom bare bones minimum I want to get out of any specific item like this it works very good for us it brings it down within that range it draws the people into my store anybody following my store will also get a email stating that these items are on sale so that's a big push in it so if you've got people in specific categories who follow you just for those items when you do a sale it pushes out a notice to them stating that some of the items that they collect they buy from me are now on sale that's the biggest point as they watch items and watch more and more items I get more and more opportunity to send more and more offers to watchers a good chunk of our sales do come from offers to watchers so if you're slow or you just want to boost up your sales or bring some more revenue in or clear out some older items this always works for us my sales are boosted from doing this every time I do it it is a ploy that always works it always draws more people to watch the items that's the whole point that's why bins buy 
right now options work the best. It's always the best option, in my opinion, to do. It usually garners me the most money for the item. I price it high. It gives me room to play with. It gives me a structure where I can still send out these sorts of discounts and an offer to a watcher. Well, there you have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Quick chocolate flavor. No one can say no to quick.